Hello, welcome to this video. It's this one, we're just going to go through and uh, fit out another ship. So just uh, go through the ship tree, right? Go through the Amara ship tree, we fit out the uh, Corvette. Fit out uh, the Crucifier, we fit out the Inquisitor, we fit out the Magnate. We fit out the Executioner, and now we're going to be fitting out the Tormentor, right? So if you're looking to fit out this ship, we can uh, view market details, and we can just uh, buy it here. So it just costs like 340000 to buy this ship. So if you just uh, buy this ship and then you just uh, start f f uh, <coughs> start piloting it, then you should uh, get it to a ship that's something like this. So just like before, we already uh, went through, looked at the ship, and then tried to uh, fit out something that works. And we'll just uh, fit it out from scratch again, right? So here's what the uh, ship would look like when you first get it. So if we just uh, drag this over here, we can uh, start fitting it out. So we tried to put uh, bigger weapons on it, but uh, they didn't work just because their uh, capa uh, capacitor was going to run out. So if we just go to the top slot, we just uh, get the weapons, right? So we just get the first things like usual. Just look up, we want to get a Gatling Pulse Laser, right? That's the uh, easiest one. It's the easiest one equipped on the ships, right? Gatling Pulse Laser, just get that. Go with the uh, charges, go up here, and just get the uh, standard S, right? Just the standard stuff, and then just the afterburner, <coughs> right? Propulsion, every single ship pretty much uses the afterburner. And then the uh, defenses, right? Pretty much uh, every single ship that we've uh, made has got the 100mm uh, plates and the small armor repair, right? Small armor repair. So that's like the basic setup that we use for every single ship that we make. Pretty much uh, every ship we start with that. Put the uh, cheapest uh, weapons on it, the easiest ones to fit, the, the afterburner, the, the steel plate, the, the armor repair, and then we go from there. <clears throat> so we got the uh, uh, small cap battery. So we're going to put the uh, small cap battery to increase our uh, cap recharge rate. Right. So if we go to the medium slots, there wasn't really uh, too much uh, other things in these uh, spots that we could figure out that would help us. But these uh, small cap batteries would allow us to keep our uh, repair systems going, right? <clears throat> Without it. Maybe we could just uh, throw it on after throw it on. So we just get uh, two small cap batteries, throw these on here, and now our cap is uh, stable, right? So before, we could just run around and we could uh, use this small armor repair and we could shoot the enemies for 1 minute and 26 seconds. But with this small cap battery, now we can do it for 2 minutes and 48 seconds. And with this other small cap battery, now we can just stay there repairing our ship forever, right? So that's the reason we got those there. And then in the uh, low slots, <coughs> so we can look at the, uh, try to get resistances for our ship. So this will be the first time we got our resistances for the ship, mainly because uh, this ship is mainly just a combat ship, right? The other one said they specialize in something. This one's like a propulsion jamming ship. Plus uh, small energy turrets. This one's a scanning ship. This one's a weapon disruptor ship. This one's a remote armor repair ship. But these two, it's just like uh, benefits to small energy turret, small energy turret, small energy turret. So these just uh, focus on small energy turrets and nothing else. We just want to keep these things firing and we want to keep repairing ourselves and we want to keep going in combat. Something we're going to want is uh, resistances to make us uh, able to stay out there longer, right? So if we uh, go down, there's like uh, three different types of resistances. So we could go with the armor hardeners, right? These are the active ones. These are the ones that would give the uh, highest resistance. So if we look at our resistance over here. Resistance is uh, 50. If we get the EM armor hardener, it jumps up to 70, right? So it's 50, then it jumps up to 70 with this uh, EM armor hardener. And then if we get the uh, thorough one, so we're in a bar ship, we want to specialize it to fight in a bar space. So we're looking for EM resistance and thermal resistance. So we go over here, right? Go over here, we search for the thermal armor hardeners, and we get the uh, thermal armor hardener. So the thing about these is we have to keep them activated. So in order for them to give us the resistance, we have to keep them uh, activated all the time. Which is a problem that we ran to even uh, with these batteries. Like uh, if we didn't have these batteries, like 126, 
Then the cap runs out in 52 seconds, right? So you can add this cap, brings it up to 121. Add this battery, brings it up to 2 minutes 20 seconds. But it still doesn't allow us to stay out there and uh, repair our ship and keep these resistances up out there forever. So we're going to need to change that, right? <coughs> so these things, these things, we get rid of them. Even if we just have a one of them, right? Even with these batteries, even if we just have a one of them, that starts to give us problems. So without them, we keep our cap stable. So these give like a 40% resistance plus 40% to resistance. So let's just take these ones off. We're going to want to look for like uh, passive ones. Ones that we don't have to keep active. Ones that uh, don't drain our capacitor. So we get that armor hardeners. What about those other things? The reactive and the scriptable. Capital sets for like a capital ship maybe. Reactive armor hardeners. So I think this one's uh, cost like 1.2 million, right? Yep, yep. So this one. So our uh, ship right now costs uh, 371000 If we were to get this uh, reactive armor hardener, right? Reactive armor hardener brings our ship up to like uh, 1.6 million, right? So we can't get this reactive hardener. It would use our cap just as before, right? <clears throat> but this just uh, aligns the damage uh, type to what it needs to, depending on what the damage is coming in. But I don't think you want to put this on a small frigate, because the reason is, because this thing uh, costs like uh, 1.2 million. Yeah, it costs like uh, 1 million. It costs just over uh, 1 million dollars. So just this uh, one module would be like uh, three times the price of our ship. So we're just going to avoid that, brings from 1.6 mil all the way down to a 371k again. So we're not going to get that one. And the uh, scriptable is for the other things. So uh, these are the ones that you keep active. You have to spend cap to use them. They give you a 40% resistance. Or you can look at the uh, armor resistance codings. So these are the uh, passive ones. So there's two different types of passive ones. There's uh, ones that has higher requirements, right? Like if we have the uh, EM coding 1, we'll just throw the EM, EM coding 1, EM coding 1, and thermal coding 1. We'll just throw those ones over. So these ones don't really have any uh, requirement, right? Show information, requirements. Just requires uh, one power to fit it. So the reason you'd use these is if uh, you had a whole bunch of other things on your ship and you didn't have too much uh, resources left, right? If you're a... Uh, CPU is all used up if you're using it on other parts of your ships. These would give you like a 19% resistance. So without having to keep it active, we keep our cap stable. We can stay out there. We can repair it forever. And we get a plus 19% resistance. So we, we want to get the uh, other ones. We want to get the other ones. So the other ones are <coughs> pretty much the exact same thing, except that they have some uh, requirements to equip them, and they give you uh, better resistances, right? So that's the energized, energized armor resistance membranes. So these are like uh, exactly the same thing, except that they have uh, fitting requirements, and they give you uh, more resistances, right? So let's just uh, go over here, armor resistance coatings EM, so it was 19% uh, resistance, right? Attributes, 19, 19.5%. So if we have these ones, these ones give uh, 28%. So they give 28%. So compared to the other ones, 19.5 up to 28%. So this is like uh, 9, 9% more, almost 10% more. 19.5, so <clears throat> 8.5. Eight point five percent more resistance. So it's almost like ten percent more resistance, right? So now with these things on, these things have a higher CPU requirement, right? The fitting requirement is a uh, twenty-five CPU. So if we have extra CPU, we have a uh, eighty of them. If we have that, we would just uh, instantly want to uh, upgrade to these ones, just because they do the exact same thing, do the exact same thing except for better. They just uh, require it more to fit onto your ship. So that's how we came to the conclusion to get these ones, right? Low slots, EM, energized membrane 1, 25 CPU. Thermal, energized membrane 1. So those are the low slot things, right? So we can have these. These would increase their uh, resistances quite a bit. And we can uh, keep everything else active. So if we don't have this cap battery, right? As soon as we take uh, one of these cap batteries off, 
our cap goes to 248. As soon as we put this back on, our cap is stable, right? So the other thing we may notice, since our uh, ship's all completely, well, we need the uh, drones, right? We need uh, drones in here. So if we uh, find some drones, Acolyte, so it's a uh, 29.7 DPS. So drones usually add a lot of DPS, right? 29.7, so we can fit like uh, one more. So you can fit four drones in here. It could only send uh, two drones at once, right? Yeah, so it can send two drones. <clears throat> so it has enough uh, bandwidth. Each drone takes five megabits to send it out. If it has uh, 10 megabits, then we can send out two drones. So the other ones are just there, just in case uh, the other ones get blown up. We can send these drones out to replace them. So we put drones in the ship. And now we have a 7.6 power grid, so we can change some things, right? <clears throat> so something you might want to change is uh, the weapons, which uh, we thought we would change, right? Except that uh, our cap runs out if we do that. So if we're using the uh, Gatling Pulse Laser 1, if we upgrade to the uh, Dual Light Beam Laser 1, Dual Light Beam Laser 1. So if we change these weapons, Dual Light Beam Dual light pulse laser one. Dual light beam laser. Dual light beam laser. We're looking for that. Dual light beam laser one. This would fit, right? We have 1.8 power grid. But if we uh, go here and put the uh, standard S on, which would give us the most cap, our uh, cap runs out in uh, 8 minutes and 4 seconds, right? So if we upgrade our weapons, our cap runs out. If we upgrade our weapons, our cap is going to run out. So instead of uh, upgrading our weapons, let's just uh, go back to the weapons that we just had, right? Go back to the uh, Gatling Pulse Laser again. Go back to the uh, easiest weapon to equip. Go to Charges and put these uh, Saturn S back on, right? Now our cap is stable again. <coughs> so that's why we decided uh, not to upgrade the weapon. Instead of upgrading the weapon, we decided to upgrade the uh, armor plates, right? So if you go to Holland Armor, Go to armor plates. We have the 100 mm and power grid 5. <clears throat> so the difference, right? The difference between the 100 m power plates, right? Yeah, 100 m power plates requires 10 CPU, 5 power, and this one requires uh, 15 CPU, 10 power. So the power goes up by 5, CPU goes up by 5, and it just uh, increases your overall armor about <clears throat> so you could maybe stay out there live a little bit longer and have a bit more uh, room <clears throat> a bit more room to uh, stay out there and repair your ship right so now our power grid's a uh, 2.6 right 2.6 so i'm pretty sure we uh, couldn't upgrade the weapons let's just try it again right we didn't uh, try to upgrade to the dual light uh, pulse laser ones dual light pulse laser ones Dual light pulse laser one. Yeah, negative 0 0.3 power grid. So we're just short, right? Negative 0 0.3 power grid. So if we can get this skill, right? <coughs> Electronic systems or is it engineering maybe? Advanced weapon upgrades. Reduces the power grid need of weapon and turret launchers by 2% per level. So we have this up to level 2. If we get this up to level 3, then we uh, would be able to upgrade our weapons, right? We would be able to upgrade our weapons if we get this up to level 3. If our uh, cap doesn't run out, right? If our cap doesn't run out. So as soon as we get that, we can act we actually uh, would have the option to maybe uh, change it if our cap does Let's just uh, check, right? We can check it. Do a light pulse laser 1. And there is a skill that we could trade to increase our cap rate as well, right? So let's just check this then, baby. Standard S. Yeah, even if we uh, do upgrade the guns, even if we do upgrade the guns, then <coughs> our cap's going to run out. So we can't upgrade the guns. We could upgrade the guns if we trade these uh, small cap batteries up to the uh, next level of them, right? If we upgrade these, these would give us more cap recharge, and then we could upgrade the weapon. So there definitely is still a way, right? It's just because we're staying with the uh, basic modules here. We're just trying to stay with all the basic modules. And then come back and then introduce everything to the uh, better modules. 
introduce them to the better ones if we need them, right? So that's the entire ship. <coughs> that was the entire ship done. So we got our everything, right? Yeah. So we got the tormentor ship. We got the 200 millimeter plates. Let's go on the left hand side, or let's just uh, read along the left hand side here. So you got like the uh, three. Let's drag this up here. So you got the three Gatling Pulse laser ones. We got the standard S charges. We got the one MN afterburner. We got the two small cap battery ones, right? And we got the uh, 200 millimeter steel plates, small armor repair one, EM energized membrane one, and the thermal energized membrane one, and the acolyte one drones thrown in there. So that's everything then. That's uh, this ship. So this would be a basic combat ship that we could use for a bar if we're doing something in a bar space. Maybe this would be a good ship to do. Just because it has the uh, EM and thermal resistance and the EM and uh, thermal damage that it uh, needs to <coughs> it needs to do good against those ships in that area. So if we just go here, we just go to hardware, go to halls and fits, go to save as. Then we can uh, save this fit, right? So you can just say like a uh, combat, combat tormentor. Go like that. Here's three Gatling pulse lasers, afterburner, cap batteries, repair, energized membranes, 200 millimeter plates, standard ammo, and the drones, right? So we're gonna save it. And if we wanted to ever uh, get this uh, ship again, we can just uh, click it. And then we just uh, click uh, fit ship. Then it would just go try to fit it if we don't uh, have anything. It would try to uh, buy it for the marketplace. And if we uh, bought it for the marketplace, it costs like uh, 530000 to get all of that. So we just click buy and fit. And then uh, this ship would be fit out, right? We just need to get the ammo because it never gives us the ammo. So I wonder if it uh, buys it. Here's some standard ammo, right? There we go. So now we got uh, this ship fit out. <clears throat> so this ship's uh, stable. It could use the uh, lasers. It does a uh, 52 DPS, which is all right, right? With the uh, standard ammo. So we could get different ammo types later, right? We could check into that. It's just uh, for the ship that we have right now. This ship uh, looks like everything works. Everything's uh, stable. We can sit there and repair ourselves forever. We got extra resistances since we're going to be like a combat type ship. And everything's good to go. H and meters per sec. So if there's anything like a, anything little combat thing where we needed a combat frigate, we could just use this uh, frigate to do that. So now we just have uh, one more ship, right? We have the Tormentor done. Now we just have the uh, Punisher, which is probably pretty much the exact same thing. Except I think it has a more power grid. I think that ship has a more power, more CPU, so it can fit more things. So we might actually be able to fit uh, better weapons on that thing. Yeah, so there we go. There's this one. We're just uh, just about done the our ships. We've got like uh, one more of our ship to go. But here's this one. So I think we should also just like uh, go here, right? Go to your ships. Then we could uh, go here, set name change the name we make it a combat tormentor right then just rename the ship and then if you ever wanted to uh, get this uh, ship again right you can just go here go to halls and fits click on tormentor is that what this is yeah and then just uh, click on here then uh, there's the ship right it's just for some reason it doesn't uh, save the ammunition but that's all right so there we go this ship is uh, complete. We've got uh, one more ship to go then. <coughs> I think this ship actually looks all right. 734000 Oh, 716 k So the price went up a little bit somewhere. Maybe the uh, drones or something. But yeah, it gets cost like uh, 734k estimated. So there we go. That's this ship. Now, one more ship to go. And then we have done uh, all of the Abar frigates, right? We didn't look at the uh, mastery tree. We didn't look at the mastery tree. So let's do that before we go, right? We looked at the ship. We know that uh, <coughs> there's going to be nothing new on the mastery tree. There's going to be nothing new because it's just a basic combat ship. But we already put all the combat skills up on the tree, right? 
So if we go to Pastry 1, it says we have the Pastry 1 certificate. Go here, Pastry 2 certificate. It says that uh, we just need these uh, gunnery skills that we're training, propulsion jabbing. And 3 is just the same thing, right? We already have the armor skills on the training queue, have the spaceship command skills up there. Weapon upgrades, waiting till we remap, navigation, everything's on there already. Radar management, we have all these on there. Small energy turret, waiting till we remap, everything's going up to level uh, 3 anyways right now, before that. And propulsion jamming 3, right? So we already, uh, <coughs> we're already well on our way to getting the uh, level 3 certificate, add the level 2 certificate for this ship. So we just looked over to that quick. So there's this one, right? There's this ship. So we got, uh, we'll just put this stuff back on again. We'll put this back on. <clears throat> so there we go. That's what this ship looks like. So that ship uh, should work pretty good for what it is. Until we add our rigs, right? We haven't, we haven't uh, added rigs yet. We haven't looked at added rigs yet. But we haven't even uh, looked at adding, uh, <coughs> haven't even looked at adding uh, beta modules yet. So eventually we can add rigs, let's just we want to uh, not add rigs just to keep the price of the ship down and keep everything uh, more open so that we're not uh, building the ship around these uh, expensive rigs that we put on the ship. Which over time would bring up the cost, right? We just got uh, 50 million left to spend, that's it. 